Hello everybody and welcome! The goal of this maintainer's track is to look at one of the main interesting parts of Falco. Falco is a CNCF incubated project that aims to provide cloud-native runtime security. In this talk, we will see an introduction to Falco, a demo about how to create custom Falco rules, me having fun with ASCII art. But first, a bit of history. Falco was created as an open source project by Sistig in 2016. It was donated to the CNCF in 2018. About a year later, the CNCF promoted Falco to the incubation level. Falco has been the first ever runtime security project to be promoted to the CNCF incubation level. Before we start with the presentation, let's introduce myself. My name is Leonardo Grasso and I am an open source software engineer at Sysdig and a Falco maintainer. My daily job is to code Falco, improve and evolve it and work with the community. I'm also the creator of the Prometheus Metrics exporter for Falco output events and I love to contribute to other Falco related projects too. In general, I love to contribute to open source projects. By the way, you can find me on GitHub, Twitter, but also in the Falco channel on the Kubernetes Slack. Among other things, I love to present the fantastic work the maintainers and the whole community continuously do to make Falco better. So, here I am. Let's start explaining what Falco is. In short, Falco is a cloud-native runtime security tool that makes it easy to consume kernel events and enrich those events with useful information. When uh, uh, an application, when every application is going to need to communicate with another application or access the network or, for example, use the file system and so on, in general, every time an application needs to access the kernel functionality, the application will use a system call. I'm talking about the system call because the system call is the fundamental interface between an application and the Linux kernel. So it is also a real source of truth for what is happening in a system. So Falco parses the content of those system calls at runtime, read them and what argument were passed to them. Then Falco enriches those events with information that, ca that came from other sources. Since uh, Falco focuses uh, on the cloud native stack, it can, for example, fetch information from the, co from the container runtime layer and uh, from Kubernetes. Falco also, also came with a, a rich rule set of security rules built explicitly for Kubernetes, Linux, and the cloud native stack. Those rules are asserted at runtime, and when a rule is violated in a system, Falco will alert the user of the violation. That's basically what Falco does. Why Falco? Change is uh, a fundamental part of cloud native. It is also part of uh, deploying software and it's part of the infrastructure. Everything changes. But sometimes unexpected things happen and we have to respond to that accurately, especially when an unexpected event can affect security. So for this reason, Falco gives us a set of eyes to protect our system against unknown or unwanted behavior. It can also detect zero-day vulnerabilities, CVs, anomalies and threats. Falco is about detection, but you can think of it as a utility that enables prevention too. 
For example, with Falco, you could also uncover uh, future security policies or create a mechanism that uh, take action uh, during uh, a security violation. But how can Falco do that? Let's see how Falco works. Well, to understand how Falco works, one of the first things to know is how it gets events from the system, specifically how it instruments the Linux kernel to receive system call. The Falco process uh, runs in the user space in the same place where your application running to. However, it also has a concept of the inputs that we usually call driver. These drivers run at the kernel level to instrument the system, so in this way they allow to intercept and understand what is happening at the kernel level and bring that up into the user space where Falco, that runs as a daemon, uh, can continually assert that information against a set of rules. Basically, these drivers act as producer, uh, producer of those events that are consumed by Falco as inputs. Falco, uh, for this reason, comes uh, with a set of drivers by default, one of which is, uh, is implemented as a kernel module, and another one that uses the eBPF technology. Each of those has pros and cons, but both provide the same functionality. For example, uh, you can use the kernel module that is very efficient, but you, maybe you cannot install everywhere. You cannot install it everywhere. On the other hand, an eBPF probe has, the, has some advantage. It can program uh, the kernel without uh, risking to break it, for example, but it requires a newer kernel. Finally, it's worth to mention that uh, a new kind of driver has, has recently been introduced. Uh, it's a ptrace based producer that we call pdig, which can run in the user space only, but is slower than other drivers. Anyway, it is still beneficial since it's the only possible solution in some environments like uh, some uh, managed uh, Kubernetes cluster or, uh, uh, or in places uh, where you cannot install the kernel module either the eBPF uh, probes. So, we are saying that uh, Falco uses the kernel of the operating system as a source of truth and takes this information, but there is more. It also reaches them with the metadata coming from other layers of the cloud native stack, for example, how you can see in the slide from the container runtime and Kubernetes. Think like, uh, think like the container image name, the pod name, the namespace, the service labels, annotation, and all these kind of stuff are consumed by Falco to make it possible to offer a view of the system that is much accurate as possible with regards, uh, of course, to your application and uh, your deployment. That is very important because uh, when, when uh, doing runtime alerting and runtime protection of, of your infrastructure, you are typically uh, much more interested in uh, what uh, service or what deployment is showing a strange behavior rather than just getting a container ID or something like that uh, is not easy to link. And uh, last, but not, last but not least, it's also important to know that drivers are not the only input uh, supported by Falco. For example, it already supports the Kubernetes audit logging as uh, an event source, and in future, maybe other inputs may be added. Now, we got an overview of how Falco gets security events as input. We can take a look at its uh, architecture. Well, from uh, a high level point of view, Falco architecture seems to be relatively simple. We can see on the right uh, in the slide uh, there are inputs which are also uh, which also include information enrichment, as uh, I was saying before. 
that's a, uh, an essential part of the input mechanism. At runtime, all that information gets collected and merged together in the security event, which in the end arrives at the Falcon engine that we see in the middle. The engine continuously matches events against the conditions specified by the rules we provide. One of when one of these conditions is violated, the engine triggers an alert and uh, delivers it uh, through the output channels. Now, since we will discuss uh, rules in depth later in this presentation, uh, let's put it aside for a moment and move on to the output channels. Falco provides some output channels. We can see the standard output, the syslog, the file output, basically it can write uh, events to a file. Uh, the program output, it can pass, uh, Falco can pass uh, uh, the alerts to the standard output of a program. And uh, uh, there is the HTTP output. For example, uh, you can use the HTTP output to integrate with a webhook or you can use other tools like uh, Falco Sidekick. That's, uh, by the way, another open source project uh, under the Falco Security GitHub organization. Uh, with Falco Sidekick, uh, you can forward uh, alerts to Slack, uh, Teams, uh, Elasticsearch, for example, and many other destinations. Finally, there is uh, also a um, gRPC output. You can enable gRPC and connect uh, to the Falco exporter, for example. That's another, that's again another open source project under the Falco Security GitHub organization, and I am the creator of it. With uh, Falco exporter, uh, you can export metrics uh, to Prometheus, for example. There is more. Uh, there are SDKs for Golang, Rust, and Python. Uh, by using them, uh, you can uh, consume Falco outputs directly from your application. Essentially, there is a bunch of ways to consume Falco outputs. We have learned that we can monitor syscall and other things and get useful information on the one hand. On the other hand, when a runtime assertion fa fails, we can send alert with those pieces of, informa of information wherever we want, wherever we want. But that's kind of useless if you don't have rules that make uh, use of that. So let's see what the rules are and how to use them. A rule tells Falco which security policy we want to observe and the information we want to receive if the policy has been violated. Basically, a rule mainly defines two things, the conditions under which an alert should be emitted and the message that should be output when a matching event occurs. Some rule examples. First of all, rules make use of, specific, of a specific syntax to express filtering condition. That syntax aims to be as lean and as, uh, and as simple as possible, but at the same time allows you to create sophisticated stuff. In the first, in the first example, we set the condition to detect when a shell is running a container. As you can see, the condition says, Container ID is different than host name. These mean that we are inside the container and there is a process called bash. In this way, we express the assertion that will be evaluated at runtime to detect when someone is using, is using a bash inside the container. Next, another example. Right below binary dir. In this rule, we are using a macro that we'll see later. Uh, so the macro open right and the second part of the condition are basically saying a write operation in one of these directories. Then, container namespace change. 
This rule detects a container trying to escape its namespace, but at the same time it excludes processes that we know are allowed to do that, for example Docker. Of course, conditions can become more and more sophisticated, as you can see in the last uh, example. Uh, it depends on how we, we use all the information provided by inputs. For this reason, Falco came with uh, a rich uh, set of security rules specifically built for Kubernetes, Linux and the Cloud Native Stack. Those rules are curated and maintained by the community and you can use all of them or just those you need. Moreover, you can customize those rules depending on your needs. But also, more important, you can easily create your own. So, what's better than a demo to see how to create rules? Let's see Falco in action. By the way, Falco is really straightforward to install. So, I want to show you how I install it on my laptop. You can find all the details on our documentation at falco.org. In my case, I'm going to use the binary package. I downloaded the, the package, extract it, and copy everything to my root file system. One more thing. Since I used the binary package, I also have to install the driver manually and the package provides a script for that, which is Falco, Falco driver loader. The script is now building and installing the Falco kernel module via DKMS. This script is also included in the installation script of uh, the Debian package or the RPM package that uh, we provide as other installation methods. So if you use those packages, you don't need to do that manually. Same thing if you use uh, the Docker image that we provide too. Okay, done. Now that Falco has been installed, let's see if it works. Okay, Falco started and uh, it uh, loaded its default configuration file, which is uh, slash etc slash falco slash falco.yaml. I see that uh, uh, it also started to detect some activity that my browser is doing right now, but uh, this is not the goal of this demo. So to test if uh, it uh, works properly, I am gonna run a simple command that will create a file inside the, bin the bin directory and this should trigger a rule that's included into the default rule set of Falco. Let's see. Okay. Falco, as we expected, emitted an alert with the command I typed before. So, in less than two minutes, we have Falco installed up and running. Awesome. All right, let me in this. Now I want to show you how to create a custom rule. This is an empty Falco rules files. Basically, a rule files is a YAML file that can contain several types of uh, elements. It can contain rules that we see below. It can also contain macros that basically are rule condition snippets that can be reused inside the rules or even another macros. Finally, it can also contain lists. Lists 
are collection of items that can be used in rules, macros, or even in other lists. The only difference is that list cannot contain filters. Now, before going, before moving forward, I want to explain you the example I'm going to use in this rule. I want to detect if my webcam is being used by some program. Exactly. I want to know if some program is using my webcam. In Linux, a webcam is a video device that is mapped to a file, for example, slash dev slash video zero. And we know that a program has to call a system call to open any file. So we are going to detect when some process opens a video device file. So let me fill this rule. First thing, we need a name. This name will uniquely identify the rule into the Falco rule engine, but also in output. Let's say video device open it. We also need a longer description that explain what the rules detect. So detects that a video device was opened. And now the most important part, the filtering expression. This expression is needed to filter those events that match our rules. Falco provides a language for that. It's a very simple language, but uh, at the same time, it's very powerful. Since we need to select those events that uh, are opening a file, so that are calling an open call, we can write event type equal to open. But I know that this is not the only syscall that open a file. I know there is a, another one that's very similar that is open at. So let's add it to two. Type equal open at. Sorry, it should be or open at. The syntax is basically a chain of Boolean expressions. There are operators. Moreover, we can also use the information received from the inputs. Now, this condition is not enough because we are just saying select all those events which are using a syscall open or a syscall open at. We also need to specify which file descriptor is uh, used by these, these uh, syscalls. And we can do that because, among other information, we also receive um, the values that are passed as argument to those syscalls. So let me add some parentheses and add file description name equal to slash dev slash video zero. In this way, we are saying select those events that are opening a file and the file is slash dev slash video zero. But uh, we can further improve this because in this way, now we are just selecting only one video device, we can have more than one. So let me change this operator with another operator provided by, provided by the syntax that C that is start with and remove the zero. In this way, we are selecting all those files that starts with dev video zero. And in this way, we should select all video device that we have in our system. And with this relatively simple condition, we have archived the goal of on my example. So let's move on on the message. The output message is also very important. 
we can write something inside it example for example a video device was opened but we can also use placeholder to include all those useful information uh, related to this event all those information that we think are relevant for this uh, rule for example for sure i want to know the the, the device name that uh, was used when uh, was used by the program that uh, triggered this alert so i can write dev equal In this way, the Falk engine will replace this with the actual file name. But we can do more. For example, I can add the command that uh, generated the event. And for that I can use proc.commandLine. But we can do even more. For example, if I wanted to know if the event was generated inside the container or not, I can add this container equal to container ID. In this way, if the event was generated inside the inside the container, I will get the container ID. Otherwise, I will see just host. That means it was not generated inside the uh, container. All right. And finally, we have to assign a priority to our rule. Let's say that uh, if someone opened my webcam, it's uh, critical. Okay. All right. I believe it's time to test the rule I've created right now. So let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna run Falco with the dash R option to specify the file, the rule file I want to be loaded. And now there are several ways to test this rule, but uh, to be honest, since I knew this demo could be a bit boring, I adopted for the funnest one. At least I hope so. And here we go. Okay, the alert was emitted and you can see me in masky art. And now you can see me dancing. Okay, let's stop this. I think it's enough. And return to serious things. Falco sent us two alerts, maybe because uh, the command I used called the, sims, the system call two times, and we can see that the priority, the priority was critical. The message is a video device was opened and we also have all other useful information like the device name, the command and so on. That's it. Well, we are about to finish and I hope you enjoyed this talk. But before closing, I'd like to give you some useful resources. Here you can find our website and our GitHub organization and also other projects I mentioned in this talk. Finally, I would like to invite you to join our fantastic community. You can find us at the Falco channel on the Kubernetes lock. And by the way, feel free to contact me. Thank you. Ciao.